Hello friends, Constance here from Cospalting Cornbread. Today we are in the Homestead Kitchen. We're going to be doing a little bit of baking. This is one of the Home Ec series, the lessons that I'm doing that are just absolute basic how-tos. There's a playlist on my website with all of the lessons. So not too long ago, we did a lesson all about leavening, all the different types of leavening, what they are, and all of that. And this is kind of a continuation of that where I'm going through and showing you different ways of using leavening. And of course, one of the most common ones and the one that people often think of first is yeast. And so we are doing a yeast bread recipe. This is a very simple recipe for some French bread. Uses just a few ingredients. Now, originally I was going to do this in my electric mixer, like I usually do, but I figure since this is a home ec lesson, we'll go ahead and knead the dough by hand this time. So I'm just going to set this aside and I'll grab a different bowl and then we'll show you the whole process. Now, when you are baking with yeast, there's different types of yeast that you can find at the grocery store. There's active dry yeast, there's instant yeast, there's uh, rapid rise or quick rise yeast. And because I'm using active dry yeast, I went ahead and I did what's called proofing the yeast. That's where I take the yeast for the recipe and I put it in part of the water. And you go ahead and you mix that up and you let it sit for a few minutes and you'll see where the mixture begins getting bubbly and foamy. That wakes up the yeast and gets it going and it also helps you see that for sure that yeast is alive and active. If you are using something like instant yeast or rapid rise yeast, you don't necessarily have to do this. You can go ahead and just mix the yeast in with all of the rest of the ingredients. But because I'm just using regular active dry yeast, I went ahead and did that. And so this recipe calls for two and a half teaspoons of yeast and a cup and a quarter of water. And so I used one quarter cup of warm water and the yeast in this small dish. And the quarter of a cup is subtracted from the total amount of one and a quarter cup. So when I do the rest of the ingredients, I'll only need one cup instead of one and a quarter. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to measure out our flour. So in addition to the yeast and, and warm water, we're going to need some bread flour, we're going to need some salt, and we're going to need some extra virgin olive oil or regular olive oil. All right, so this recipe calls for three and a half cups of bread flour. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna measure this into my mixing bowl. Now, when you are measuring out flour, you don't wanna cram your measuring scoop or, or cup down into there really firmly. You wanna be very gentle, and that's what I like about these scoops, that you can just kinda of slide it into the flour. Uh, you can also spoon the flour into your measuring cup but you don't wanna cram it in there, otherwise you might end up with more flour than you intend to have, and that might throw off your bread. Now we're not done with the flour, so we're not gonna put that away yet. We'll need a little bit more of that in a little bit. All right, so we got our flour. We're gonna need a teaspoon of salt. There we go. Okay. I'm just gonna take my measuring spoon. I'm just gonna kinda of stir that salt into the flour real quick. All right, so we're gonna look at our yeast mixture right there. You can see how it's all bubbly and foamy, and that tells us that our yeast is good, it's alive and awake, and we're ready to go ahead and use that. So now the recipe calls for a cup and a quarter altogether of warm water. I've already used a quarter of a cup with my yeast, so I'll just need another cup. And you want this water to be warm, but not hot and not cold. If it's too cold, the yeast isn't going to wake up and get activated and do all its happy yeast things. If it's too hot, then that's going to kill the yeast. And so you want a nice, happy medium. Basically, you want it to feel like a nice, cozy bath for a baby. Not too hot, nice and comfortable. 
Now, you don't really want to use water straight out of your tap if you are living where there is chlorinated water. Chlorine isn't great for yeast, so you do want to use filtered or well water whenever possible. Uh, if you don't have a filter or any way to remove the chlorine from your water, something that you can do is simply measure out the water the day before, let it sit overnight in an open container, and the chlorine will dissipate from the water overnight. So that is a way to dechlorinate your water if you don't have the ability to do any other way. So what I do is I take some of my water that is filtered and cold and I have my tea kettle with hot water and I'll just kind of mix the two until I get it to the right temperature with clean hands. I just kind of stir it together with my finger and I feel the temperature. Now I'm going to end up with more water than what I need to begin with, but that's okay. You just want to get it to the right temperature and then pour off what you don't need. And you want to stir it really well too to make sure the water's all combined. All right, that feels good. So I'm going to add my one cup and my yeast and water mixture. Make sure you get all that yeast out of there. Okay, now I'm just going to take my uh, spoon, spatula, whichever. This is called a spoonula because it's kind of a little bit of both. And I'm just going to mix this all together until everything is combined. All right, now we're going to start off with a really shaggy mess. If you can see that right there, doesn't look very pretty, but that's because it hasn't been kneaded yet. So to knead the dough, we're going to put a little bit of flour on the surface here. We're going to turn this out onto the counter, the floured surface. everything off of there. Okay. And then with floured hands, I can take my rings off, make it a little bit easier so I don't have dough all stuck in them. We're just going to gather everything together and start kneading it. Give it a turn, fold it towards you, and push. Turn, push, turn, fold, push, turn, fold, push, turn, fold, push. Actually, let me take that off too, just to be on the safe side. I find it easiest if I push with the heel of my hand. And if it starts getting sticky, just add a little bit more flour. And you'll kind of get into a rhythm of doing this. Alright, one of the questions that is most often asked about yeast dough is how do you know when it's done being kneaded? How long do you do it? It's going to vary depending upon the recipe. On average, it's usually about 8 to 10 minutes, but it could be more, it could be less. The easiest way to know if your dough is done is first the way it feels. It's going to feel kind of smooth. It's going to feel like it's just all one cohesive piece. It's also going to be nice and elastic. When you kind of roll it onto itself and get a nice smooth surface and you push your finger into it, that hole, that indentation will spring back. 
and it'll also stretch if you grab a hold of the dough it'll stretch and not tear easily so that is um, two ways of knowing whether your dough is ready or not and so we are kind of there so I'm just going to need this for maybe another minute or so and then we will move on to the next step All right, so my dough is done kneading, so I'm just going to take a lint-free tea towel. Uh, this is one that one of my sweet subscribers uh, embroidered for me. It says, life is short, lick the bowl. <laughs> so I'm just going to cover this up and we're gonna let this rest for about 20 minutes and then we will form the loaves. And while it's resting, I'm gonna go ahead and tidy up my mess. All right, friends, so my kitchen is tidied up. It has been 20 minutes, and so now we're going to form this dough into bread loaves. Now the pan that I'm using is a French uh, French bread loaf. Now the pan that I'm using is a French bread loaf pan. It has all of these little holes in it. You can see it's kind of see-through. And those holes are for airflow, but you don't have to have a pan like this in order to make this bread. If you have one of these, great, but you can also uh, bake the loaves on a baking sheet or a baking stone just fine. Whichever kind of pan you're going to use, you do want to lightly oil it or coat it with my nonstick baking mixture that I have on my website. I'll put a link to that down below. Now it's only been about 20 minutes, but you can see it's already beginning to rise. So we're gonna make two loaves out of this. I'm just gonna take, this is a, a a dough knife or a dough blade. It, I've had this thing forever. It was part of a, a knife set we bought a long time ago. So I'm just going to cut the dough in half. You don't need one of these blades to do this. You can just use any knife to cut it in half. So what we're going to do is we're going to form this into two long loaves. And the easiest way I think to do that is to kind of pat this out into a long rectangle like so and then we're just going to kind of roll it into a loaf and if it's sticking to your surface you can use a little bit of flour or you could use a little bit of olive oil on the um, on your surface, All right? So we've kind of formed that into a log and we're going to put it seam side down on our pan. Okay, kind of pinch those ends together and kind of tuck them underneath a little bit. Like that. And now we're going to let this sit here and we're gonna cover it with the tea towel again. And the reason I cover this is because it kind of helps keep the moisture in and then it also keeps any kind of dust or fuzz or lint or anything from getting onto the bread uh, or onto the dough while it's sitting here. So we're just gonna cover that up. So now we're just gonna let this sit here for about an hour and you wanna make sure it's kind of a warm location. Uh, if your kitchen is chilly, if it's winter time, you could turn on the light inside your oven uh, just to make kind of an ambient warm uh, location. So our kitchen is not chilly, even though we have the air conditioning going, we don't keep it crazy cold in here. So, so sitting here on the counter will be just fine. Alrighty, so let's take a look here. You can see that the loaves are about double in size. They're just about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven to 450 degrees. 
All right, so my oven is preheated, and before I put the loaves into the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to uh, coat the, the surface with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. This helps the loaves to get a nice golden uh, crust on the outside. Now what I normally do is I take a pastry brush and a little bit of oil and I just brush it over the top. But since we moved, I have no idea where my pastry brushes went. I had two of them. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a shortcut today and I have a spritzer of extra virgin olive oil. And so I'm just going to lightly spritz over uh, the tops of the loaves. All right, so now these are gonna go into the oven, 450 degrees for 16 to 18 minutes. I'll set the timer for 16 minutes. If they are nice and golden brown, we'll go ahead and take them out. If they need a little bit longer, we'll give them a couple more minutes. All right, you guys, beautiful French bread. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this out onto my cooling rack. And we'll just let this cool for a little while. You never wanna cut into fresh bread that has just come out of the oven because all of that steam that's inside there is the moisture for the bread. And if you go and you slice into it, as soon as it comes out, you're gonna release all of that steam and it's gonna let your bread dry out. So warm bread, great, no problem, cut into it. But when it's piping hot, give it a few minutes. Be, be patient, it's worth it. Now, sometimes people have some issues when it comes to yeast breads. They, they may have some problems. They want to know where it went wrong, how they can fix it so that they don't have those problems in the future. On my website, cosmopolitancornbread.com, I do have a troubleshooting article that takes you through all of the most common issues that people have when they're making yeast breads and what you could do to potentially fix that so that you don't have that problem again in the future. So I hope you liked this introduction into yeast breads. Uh, I have several yeast bread recipes on my website as well as videos on my YouTube channel. And I'll put a link to the category and the playlist in the video's description down below. Thanks for joining me here again at Cosmopolitan Cornbread. My name is Constance and I will talk to y'all next time. Mm -hmm.